Hello everyone, my name is Udit and today I'm going to talk a little bit about the Google Technical Program Manager phone interview process. At the end of this video, you should have a pretty good understanding of what the TPM phone interview looks like, what interviewers are assessing in this round, some sample questions of each type that they likely ask, as well as some tips to prepare for this. As a quick introduction, I'm from Prepfully. We offer anonymous mock interviews with someone who's worked in your target company and role, alongside a host of other interview prep services. So in this context, we've got a lot of Google TPMs who've been helping candidates with mock interviews and advice, and who've also helped us put together relevant content, this video being an example of it. So onto the Google TPM phone interview. This is typically step two in the TPM interview journey at Google and comes right after you pass the recruiter screen. Let's discuss the format first, since it's pretty standard for this round. The interview is roughly 60 minutes long and it's broken down into three broad sections of 15 to 20 minutes each. The first section is a test of your past program management skills. The second section is technical questions. And the third is all behavioral and situational questions. Now, what is the interviewer trying to assess? Their goal is to get a high level assessment of your skills across the entire list of domains that I've listed out. So in the first section, your interviewer will deep dive into your past experience as a TPM. This usually starts off with a pretty broad question such as tell me about a technical program you managed recently. Your interviewer is interested in learning about the work you did, how you drove it forward, the decisions you made, the stuff you unblocked or influenced and what lessons you learned from it all. The questions you are asked will reflect this intent. They'll often take the shape of, so what would you do differently if you had to do it all over again? Or what were some of the challenges you faced from the teams involved in this program? In the second part of the interview then, the focus is all on technical aspects. It could be a high level architecture or systems design discussion, although there's relatively limited time. So you're not going to deep dive to the extent that you would in the on-site or virtual on-site loop. If you've mentioned engineering skills on your resume, then there's a possibility you might be asked to demonstrate this. A sample here of something you could be asked is maybe what's the most complex architectural decision that you've been part of? Or sometimes things are more theoretical in nature, like how would you design an identity and permissions management system for a photo sharing app? Finally, to the third section then. In this section, your interviewer is trying to understand your motivation for this role, as well as how you'd react to situations you'd face on a day-to-day -day basis. So questions are going to accordingly reflect this. For instance, you could be asked how this role aligns with your long-term career objectives. Or for instance, how you deal with unexpected events or failures. Or to talk about a time where you influenced leadership and got them to buy into something that they were initially opposed to. If you'd like to practice sample questions for each of these types, we've got hundreds of them on Prepfully's website for this role, all contributed by recent candidates. So to keep things short, I'm gonna to move to the next section which is our tips for cracking this round. First tip, always make sure you're answering the question asked. It's really easy to forget uh, that an interviewer asked, tell me about a time and start answering in the hypothetical with, here's what I do if I face this situation. Or for instance, in a technical question, feel free to clarify or scope. You're expected to ask intelligent questions, which can help you ensure that you're answering exactly what the interviewer is looking for so that they can test you on the skills they are interested in assessing. Second tip, be extremely succinct. You need to cover a tremendous amount of ground in this interview. So you don't want to let just one topic or one section hijack the entire conversation. So when preparing, make sure to think of several stories that you're going to bring up in advance the key messages you want your interviewer to take away from these stories, as well as ancillary information that might prove useful when they ask follow-up questions about these stories. Third and final tip, practice. And this is something I say in pretty much every video I make because there's just simply no replacement for good old-fashioned practice. Say your answers out loud to friends, to colleagues you trust, or best of all to a Google TPM who can give you feedback. Ask if you're adequately demonstrating the skills that Google is looking for. So that's all from me. This is our guidance from Prepfully and our experts on rocking Google's TPM phone interview. Once you feel ready for some practice or just want a sense check of your preparation level, you can book an anonymous online mock interview with a Google TPM on Prepfully. There's a link in the description below. 
In addition, I've also linked to a bunch of additional useful resources for Google's TPM interview. There's a written guide going into a lot more depth than I've covered. It also covers information about the on-site round, so you can check that out too. And if you have follow-up questions about the interview, feel free to ask in the comments below. And if you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks and good luck. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe. Our website is prepfully.com. We've got lots of interview questions there. You can also schedule a mock interview with one of our experts. You can find the link in the description below. All the best from us at Prepfully, and we hope you totally rock your interview.